presenter is a former lecturer and educator who is also a beauty blogger. She has been blogging on WordPress for six years and has recently switched to doing it full time. Her blog has international readership from Asia, USA and Europe. Please welcome Roxanne Chia. Hi. Uh, Okay, I was looking at the list of topics that was presented during this conference and I feel like my topic is a very uh, uh, brainless advertising break. So it's not going to be anything about coding or anything difficult or tricky, but it's going to be something that's a bit more entertaining, I hope. So just sit back and enjoy the presentation. Um, today I'm going to be talking about how being an educator has changed the way I blog about beauty. So I... Uh, just a small background about me. Um, while I was blogging, I started in 2010. And I started blogging when I was still doing my master's and trying to get um, my master's degree in nanochemistry. And after that, I continued blogging. And that was when I decided to sign a bond with the Ministry of Education in Singapore to take up teaching as a career uh, until at least the bond ends. So. My blog is theskinnyscout.com and I actually rebranded it a couple of months back and originally it was called Laced Ivory. So as you can see, it was set up in 2010 and when I first set up my blog, it was to blog about um, mainly and only beauty. So uh, I was talking about scientifically backed reviews of products that I had personally tried. And I was also giving a little bit of tutorials on how to create certain beauty looks um, depending on whatever occasion um, my readers are interested in. Okay, so I also started to talk about style and travel about two years ago. And so now my blog, The Skinny Scout, has beauty, style, and travel as well. There are many things that have changed ever since I started teaching and being an educator. And uh, obviously, a lot of them have affected my life in one way or another. But there are just three main or three important ones that have affected the way I blog about beauty. So I'm just going to talk about three of them today. The first one is that now I was part of the civil service. Okay, so um, this has really great implications about the things that I would talk about on my blog. So because, uh, I'm not sure if you are aware of this, but I think if you have people, uh, if you have friends who are in the education service in Singapore, you would know that we have to sign a bond with the government. And if at any time we get fired, you know, then we have to pay the, the bond back to the government. And it's not cheap, it's like tens of thousands of dollars. So I didn't want to get fired because of something I wrote on my blog. And I knew that I need to maintain a certain level of professionalism at what I was doing. So I needed to separate what I was doing on my blog with, uh, from what I was teaching in school. And I tried to keep them as separate as possible. So this means I didn't tell anybody at school about my blog. But you know, students being students, they're going to find out anyway because they like stalking their teachers, right? <laughs> so that's what happened basically just six months into my teaching career at where I was. I also needed to balance between a full-time job and blogging as a, well, in a way it was my hobby, but I also wanted to make something big out of it at that time. So in order to remain professional, I had to talk about topics that were safe, topics that were objective, topics that were informative to the people who were reading my blog. So at the same time, I was blogging about beauty, but I didn't want my colleagues to see me as a bimbo and as someone who couldn't teach chemistry at the junior college level. So here's an example of um, uh, before and after, you know, comparison of using a mascara. Obviously, you can tell it's a blue mascara that I was using. And here you can tell that I was uh, just you know, trying to make my pictures look nice. And uh, this was about a review on a lip gloss that I personally bought and tried. Okay, and 
As I mentioned before, I started uh, blogging about style and travel about a couple of years back. And so when I did outfit posts, I had to make sure that I wasn't revealing much about my physical body in any of my posts. So I had to present a professional image of myself, but at the same time, I had to tell people that, hey, I can be teacher, but I can also be cool. And you don't have to, you know, reveal your cleavage or reveal your butt cheeks or anything like that to be seen as someone who is fashionable. You can be stylish even if you're dressed from head to toe, you know, even if you're covered from head to toe. The second thing that changed in my life was that I now had less blogging time. So, uh, as I mentioned, I started blogging when I was doing my master's degree and surprisingly at that point in my life, I had quite a bit of time to blog uh, on, on my website. So, for example, in a week, I could have a face of the day post, I could have a haul post, I could have a swatch, I could have also a couple other more descriptive and longer um, articles on my blog. But that all changed when I started teaching and got into the groove of things. And now, I only had three posts in a week. So the first one, it's like um, Vietnam tripping. It is a post which uh, featured an outfit. When I was on holiday, uh, I had a post that featured uh, affiliate products. And the last one, uh, just a simple uh, face of the day. So because of this, um, now right here you see there are three entries in a week, but this was a good week, meaning I had more time than usual to blog. So that would be sometimes like uh, June holidays, the December holidays, or when I just started teaching and it was January. So <laughs> the students hadn't even come in yet. And so because of this, having less time to blog, I needed to ensure that I need to have a consistency in my blogging schedule, and I needed to focus also in the quality over the quantity of my post. So just to show you, uh, give you an idea, this is my blogging schedule or my editorial calendar for the beginning of this year. Okay, so as you can see, I only have about one to two posts in a week, and that was all I could manage. And if you look at the post on uh, February 21, for the week of February 21, I only had one post, and it was a link love post, which means that I had a series in my blog where I would just grab interesting articles from all over the internet and put them all together as one according to a theme. And if you realize, that's not even my content. It's a content that I curated from other people just so you know there would be something interesting going on on the blog. You would notice also that um, my articles are spread out in the week and they are not crammed together, for example, just on the weekends or on uh, Thursdays and Fridays. Because when you have a blog, the important thing is to have a consistent schedule and that's important because you don't want your readers to get bored, you know. Um, they're going to be like, oh, it's Monday, okay, there's something on the blog that's new today. And then they don't want to have to wait another week to get something else again. Or if you didn't schedule your post correctly, you might have a post on maybe Monday and Tuesday, and then nothing else until the next Saturday, for example. And there's going to be too long a time between your posts. Your readers are going to be bored, and they will go somewhere else. So talking about the quality of my post, okay, I'm going to show you some pictures of um, the posts, of some pictures that I posted before I started teaching. Okay, so these were the kind of pictures that I had. They are not impressive at all. They are horrible, to say the least. Um, the lighting is bad. There's no depth of feel. You know, even the reflections of the surface, I didn't take the time to Photoshop it away. Uh, it's just horrible. I used a point and shoot camera and I had a product and I, that's all I did. I used a point and shoot camera. I shot the pictures, I put it up on my blog and wrote some words about them. There's nothing uh, interesting about this. So I realized I needed to increase the quality of the pictures that went with my blog post. So, so that's what I got after. I invested in a DSLR. I invested in proper lighting, not necessarily um, getting big lights or, or a studio lighting, but at least find a place somewhere that has good natural light, which is free. So for example, you can see in the first picture on the top left, you know, it's something about 
a girl on her dresser um, putting on her makeup, her contouring, her, her highlighting, and it's a very intimate, a very me time. You can see it's her dresser, there's her perfume, there's her candle. It's very nice and relaxed. Uh, the picture in the top right, it's a couple of Chanel glosses, things that are very timeless, um, classy, flawless. Uh, the bottom left, for example, this was pic a picture from a blog post um, that I talked about uh, of a beauty brand that I discovered when I was shopping in Paris. And this beauty brand was about um, luxury that is affordable and was also cruelty free. So to give off that image to tell that story, I put you know the fluffy fur, fake fur, because uh, cruelty free, right? So fake fur at the background and try to make things look a bit more classy. And obviously for the last picture there, you can tell it's something to do with the holiday, you know, the glitz and the glamour and things like that. So overall, you can see now the pictures, they're crisp, they are much clearer, and they also tell a story behind what I was talking about. So the last thing that uh, has changed in my life was actually the most important and the most significant part of my life and was the most important reason I changed the way I blog about beauty. So I discovered now that I had an influence over a new uh, audience and these were people between the ages of 17 to 19 and if they graduated from junior college they would be older than that and I realize now that I have the power to um, change the way they believed uh, in things in the world, change the way they thought about things that happened in the world and I could make them better people uh, to begin with. So maybe just to give you a, a couple of examples to tell you some stories I had with my students or my kids, as what we usually call them. Um, there was once I was having a lesson and in between uh, a slide and the next slide, there was a boy that came to me and he said, Miss Chia, uh, can you give me a shout out on Instagram? I'm like, I don't even know you have Instagram and why would I do that? And he's like, so I can be famous. <laughs> and ironically, this boy has more followers than me. <laughs> on Instagram and he has more likes than me on Instagram too. Um, and maybe I tell you another story um, whereby, okay, that you know how popular um, bloggers are nowadays, right? And they have a very big influence on students, uh, teens, teenagers, people who started university. And so there was this famous blogger and somehow I ended up on one of her Instagram posts. So. It was something like, okay, half of my face was cropped off because, I mean, she's the star of her photo, right? So there's only half of my face, and the half of the face that you can see was completely blur, and I was in the background. And even then, my students could tell that was me. I don't know how they do it because they, she didn't tag me or anything. And so the next day, everyone just kept coming to me and asking, Miss Chia, is that you? Can you tell me about your blog shop? And I was like, I don't know anything about that. I do not have a blog shop. I don't know what you're talking about. And even in the middle of lectures, there would be a student coming up to me and say, Miss Chia, is this you? And showing me the picture <laughs> right on his phone. And so the point I'm trying to make is that te being a teacher or an educator, you have a great influence not only in class or in school, but also outside of it. And that's what is really important because students actually think uh, or are influenced more by you outside of school than when you're in school. And so because of this, I knew I had many ways to send across messages to the students, uh, basically on how to be good human beings in the world. And one of the ways I did this was to um, write about blog posts on body positivity, um, things about not body shaming, uh, just self-love and confidence and how to help one another be better people or to support one another in times of need. Another message that I wanted to send to the students was, hey, you're a chemistry student, you can be a chemist, but you can also be cool. 
So the, the misconception that many students have, even now, is that if you're a science student, you're a nerd, you're an outcast, all you do is study all day, you're not fun to hang around with. And I wanted to break that stereotype that students had and to make sure that, you know, or to help them see that, hey, science can be really fun, interesting, and useful. So not only was I talking about ingredients that we can find in beauty products, I was also talking about um, the science behind some of the beauty tools that we use. So most recently, I wrote about the science behind um, a skin moisture analyzer and just basically telling people that, hey, if a beauty company tells you that, oh, my moisturizer works because after applying it, you know, and the moisture analyzer tells me that I'm more moisturized now, I mean, you don't have to buy that. Okay, and another point I wanted to make also was that I now have uh, the option of being a bit more mature in the way I was blogging about beauty. So these were some pictures from my old beauty post where I would... I was talking about phase of the day and giving tutorials about how to create certain looks. So these would be the pictures that I would use. So for example, I have a picture or a couple of pictures of me in various poses and with my makeup all done and nice, you know, I'm trying to look pretty and all. And then I would write a few words about, okay, these were the products I used uh, and maybe just say, oh, I used this color first, I used that eyeliner next and that was it. So actually, if I look back at this post, I kind of cringe because they are all kind of like, hey, look at me, I'm so pretty, you know, I'm so bimbody, and my makeup is so nice and all that. And I don't teach anything to, to whoever is reading my post. So I started to do videos. Um, the first video at the top is the first video I made. And at that point, I didn't know if I wanted to be speaking in my videos or not. But I ended up making one anyway, and I just used music to cover up everything. And I had uh, captions to tell them, okay, in point form, this is what I'm doing now. Uh, apply eyeshadow on your eyelids or whatever and like that. So I did videos and the point of these videos were to show that before having makeup on, you will see the real me. And after makeup you know, and everything, that's the me that people usually see on a day-to-day -day basis. And I wanted to tell my students that you can be confident even when you don't have makeup because in schools, in Singapore, students do not put makeup uh, when they go to school. So because of that, there are some students who are actually quite, um, how do I say it, not confident of themselves and they are quite uh, unsure of the way they are being presented to the other people around them. So yeah, to summarize, uh, the main three things that have changed are me being a part of the civil service. So now I had to blog responsibly. I had less blogging time, so I had to focus on quality over quantity. And I also had influence over an audience who were very impressionable at the age of 17 to 19. And how my blogging has evolved, um, several ways. My posts are more informative and objective and not controversial at all. All my outfit posts are very um, conservative. They're all covered up. I post according to a schedule, which is less frequent than before, but of a higher quality than before. I also post educational messages of positivity and more video tutorials to help my students along the way. So that's all I have for today. I thank you very much for listening to me. I hope I wasn't speaking too fast. Um, you can find me on theskinnyscout.com and I'm also on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter and YouTube as The Skinny Scout or you can also email me at rockzen at theskinnyscout.com. All right, thank you. Thank you, Roxanne. Uh, is there any questions for her? Hi. Um, about your students reading your blog. Yeah. One thing that I, we get to talk about a lot in my classes is uh, how to judge the reliability and what you should believe on the web. Mm -hmm. um, and there are lots and lots of blogs, especially about beauty and also about chemicals and chemistry, which I teach. Um, yeah. Which I get you upset about. Now, you're a chemistry educator yourself. Um, do you somehow use your that, that content to 
discuss these issues with students or they don't believe whatever they read on the web or, I mean... Okay, um, well, thanks for your question. Um, basically, in junior colleges, uh, do, do you teach in a local institution or...? Um, at the moment, I'm teaching at NTU, but I'm... Oh, okay. So, so we have a subject called GP, which is general paper, and this subject teaches our students to be very critical readers, and they're taught not to believe everything they see or read, even if it's a newspaper article or or if it's a blog or a, a website like CNN or BBC, because everything that is being written online or even in a traditional media all has a certain perspective. So they are already being taught that they need to uh, be critical when it comes to reading information online, but whether they really practice it or not is really up to them and if they have the skill to do so. Um, actually, most recently I did blog about a topic like that, uh, because in Singapore recently, there has been quite a few cases about um, bloggers not being 100% uh, truthful in what they are presenting to their followers or their readers. And I just wanted to uh, clarify that, you know, whatever a blogger says, you can believe it or not, but a blogger never forces you to purchase anything they're talking about, and you are the one who has the key to make the decision for yourself. So I made that point very clear in one of my latest um, blog posts and also shared it on my various social media channels. Is there any more questions? How do you keep yourself to have constantly have new ideas of what to post? Okay, how do I constantly have new ideas to post. Uh, first of all, I write a blog, but that means that I also read a lot of blogs. And I'm also constantly reading things like e-magazines and stuff, or um, just, you know, L and Vogue, and just trying to keep abreast of whatever is happening in the fashion and beauty world. So it doesn't have to be something that is purely in Singapore or something that's purely in Asia, um, but it's something that's just happening around the world today. And from there, you know, you can always use tools like BuzzSumo or just Google search to find, okay, what are the topics that are trending nowadays? What are people talking about? And from there, you know, you can just curate um, articles or content from other people and just come up with your own uh, edited content from there. I'm so sorry you had to see this. I was blogging before this. So. <laughs> Uh, if there's no more questions, is there any more questions? Okay, if there's no more, thank you so much, Pak Thank you.